In a time long ago, there was a kingdom called Galomir, a land where the people were happy, war was unknown, the children were polite and helpful at all times, and not just when mooching for chocolate. The monarch of the realm, King Peregrine, was wise and just and, all in all, a bit of a decent chap, fond of philosophy, literature, and pictures of kittens in bonnets. He was an enlightened ruler. But he had among his retinue an official court magician, a brilliant but unscrupulous man by the name of Zarok. Instead of confining himself to the horoscopes and balloon animals for which he was employed, Zarok began to conduct horrific experiments on the bodies of the dead. Of course, people often get quite sensitive about their deceased loved ones, so it wasn't long before the king found out and had the sorcerer banished from the land. Zarok skulked away into the wilderness and busied himself by perfecting his experiments, seething with rage and practicing his diabolically evil laugh. At last, with an army of demons at his command, he set off to bring Galumir under his foul dominion. The captain of the royal guard, Sir Daniel Fortescue, led the militia into battle against this unholy horde. Songs are sung to this day of how he spearheaded the charge deep into the accursed multitude, how the invaders fell before him like wheat before the scythe, and how at last, though mortally wounded, he fell upon the infernal sorcerer and destroyed him utterly. True, these songs don't have particularly catchy choruses, but people cared less about chart success in those days. And so it was that Daniel Fortescue went down in history, the hero of Galamir. And there came upon the land a time of peace, harmony, and quality wines of affordable prices. The tranquility was to last for a hundred years, but then the sorcerer returned. Fortescue! At last! Come! Get up! We got things to do! Hey, hey! Easy, my friend! In my culture, we treat the guests with courtesy. 
especially if they stop by for 100 years. Hmm. Who am I? My friend, you should feel honored. Usually the corpses, their skulls are filled with just the worms. Instead, you get I, Al-Zalam, glorious genie of the Sultan Prince Razim the Ribald, noble protector of... Hmm. You doubt me? I see it in your eye. Well, it is true. With genies, usually we are trapped within the lamps. That is bad. Very oily for the skin. But far worse, let me tell you, is when evil sorcerer tricks you, traps you inside skull of cowardly knight. Oh, the smell! It is mustier than a Saracen's jockstrap. You imply that I lie. In my culture, that would earn you 50 strokes of the cut. And we are allergic to cuts. So that is a terrible punishment. But fine, if you're too busy with the being dead, we just sit back and watch Zarok destroy Galomir once more. Oh, you remember Zarok at least? Yes, that madman is back from the exile. He has mastered the dark magics, has been waking the dead, turning good men evil. He turns this land bad quicker than tub of yak's cheese next to warm radiator. Hmm. Why are you back among the living? His magic! Or perhaps fate? Fate gives you chance to redeem yourself. Make amends for your cowardly death. Eh? Yes, yes, I was there that fateful day. I saw you hanging back, pretending to tie your bootlaces and getting hit by first stray arrow. <laughs> ah, never believe on publicity. You just a big coward, buried as big hero with poor genie still trapped inside his head. Come on, I know you are tough guy deep down. We can work with that. I will be guide. Maybe this time we truly defeat him. His men killed you. His magic cursed me. Together, we squash that creepy cockroach. Free me, turn you into a real hero, eh? Well, 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 he's back. Old Sir Daniel Fortescue, the hero <coughs> of Gallomere. Rendered eyeless and lifeless by the first arrow. Rendered heroic by the mists of time. It's amazing what good PR can do. Now the fickle finger of fate has given him a second chance. A chance to make good his ignoble past. A chance to defeat Zarok and live up to the legend. If I had any breath, I wouldn't be holding it. Hmm. Oh. Anyway, many of my stony kind reside in Gallomere. We may be woken with a gentle nudge, not with a kiss. Please, don't try the kissing thing. We don't have affectionate natures. Welcome, O oh undernourished one, to the Hall of Heroes, where the bravest warriors from history spend eternity feasting, arm wrestling, and singing out of tune. If they think you're worthy, you may be able to persuade them to give you a new weapon. In your case, you'll be lucky to walk away with a spud gun. Now move it, Twiggy. Captain Fortescue, does the battle go well? <laughs> A temperate setback, I'm sure, sire. Gosh, they were merry times, slapping our thighs, downing beakers of bitter shandy, and the battles, ooh, they were fun too. How I wish I could help you in some way now. <laughs> But hold! Oh, you can take my crossbow. I used it at the Battle of Gallomere. After you were slain, I shot Zarok's champion, Lord Cardock, a clean kill, sir. Right through the eye, at some 300 yards. Hmm. Uh, not that there's anything clever about shooting someone in the eye, sir. Hmm. You're back. Looking like something from a butcher's dustbin. Oh, and watch that smell. Oh, decomposition. <laughs> well, 
You're too late, anyway. My army has already risen from the grave. Still, never mind, eh? Chalk it up as yet another of your inglorious failures. <laughs> I really need to work on that mocking laugh. Fortescue? What's this I hear? That art cad Zarok still alive? Thought you killed the fella. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Never mind, you old war horse. Happens to the best of us. Think you've slaughtered a chap, but up he pops again. Crushed limbs, flattering like cheap flags, but otherwise perfectly chipper. Or is that just me? What, what? Ha ha! Ha ha! Anyway, I expect Johnny Zombie's a bit more of a handful than you remember. How are you doing for weapons, old man? Hmm. Tell you what. Take my old war hammer. It's no bother. In two centuries, all I've used it for is putting up shelving. Hmm. 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 Fortescue, you jawless arrow magnet. What are you doing in a hall of heroes? <laughs> How I pity the people of Galomir. Oh, that their fate should be in the hands of a vacuum-headed chimp like you. Still, I suppose it's not fair to take it out on them. Take my longsword, and try not to stab yourself in the foot. You know, I've always had my doubts about you, Fortescue. You're simply not carved from hero material. Mm. Oh, Dan, Daniel, Danikins. You are so persistent, I'll give you that. But then so are beggars' babies. And I trample those underfoot, too. Look, you really must get it into your thick, exposed cranium. You cannot stop me from conquering Galomir. Already I have transformed the populace into servile zombies and drained the sunlight from the skies, withering many a tomato plant in the process. How could a spindly monovisual carcass like you reverse the momentum of such an epic master plan? And see where your stubbornness has got you? <laughs> Do you see? You're trapped forever in this necropolis. Still... You could always discuss your predicament with my good friend up there. I'm sure he'd do his best to help you. <laughs> Sadly, I can't hang about to listen to the musical twang of your tendons. My army is amassed, and it will not be long before my scouts locate the demon claw that will unlock my beloved shadow demon. I must return home to oversee the invasion of this pathetic realm. And possibly take a power nap. I am compelled by some primal force always to play this song of fear and sadness. Please, bring me new music that I may break this cycle of endless misery. Go on. Do us a favor. It's driving me mental. By the sacred underwear of Brittany, goddess of popular beat combos. I underestimated you, my friend. Dying obviously did you the world of good. That key opens the glass demon gate in the cemetery. Dan? Dan. Dan the man. Tell me, what's a warrior queen got to do to get a guy like you? <laughs> Don't be shy, baby. I've seen you giving me the eye. You may be weak and feeble like all men, but 
I like you, Daniel. <laughs> How are you at Topiary, brother? <laughs> Only I need another gardener, someone to trim my bush and look after my clematis. <clears throat> Here, lover, hold my spear. Grip it tight now, and think of me when you throw it. Greetings, stranger. I'm Death. It is I who eased the passage of lost souls on their final journey. The hours are hell, but I wanted a job working with people. <laughs> but hold. Have we not met before? Sir Daniel Fortescue! I've done you once already. I never forget a corpse. It's that pesky Zarok. I'm up to my eye sockets in the ex-deceased. Business hasn't been this brisk since the great massacre of Melomede. I may have to take on an intern. <laughs> Help you fight Zarok? Of course. If only to get some rest. I'd be off on holiday topping up my tan if it wasn't for that evil old madman. But there is a way to stop him. <laughs> You'll need the Anubis Stone. It was used by Zarok a hundred years ago to create an undead army. The very army that you fought on the day of your, uh, arrow-based mishap. After that most bloody of battles, the Galamir people acquired the stone. To prevent its power being used again for evil, they broke it into four and gave each piece to a trusted member of the realm. You'll need to find all four pieces to use the stone's power. Then you can summon up an army that can compete with Zarak's elite guard. The terrifying Fazgul's. They sound like a trapeze act, but trust me, they're a lot less fun. <laughs> well, I've seen and heard many things on my deathly duties. I could write a book, you know. Of course, no publisher would touch it. <laughs> All I want these days is romantic fiction and epic poems. Anyway, one piece was buried with the great Mullock chief. His tomb is in this very cemetery. The mayor of Sleeping Village inherited a piece from his predecessor and knows its current whereabouts. There's a rumor that the Witch of Pumpkin Gorge has a piece in her possession, although she may have put that about herself to drum up some tourist fortune-telling trade. Ah, yes, and the fourth and final piece is in possession of the deceased King of Galamir. Assuming he is still deceased, you never know these days, do you? I mean, look at you. But if he is... It'll be locked in his castle vault. Okay? <laughs> You're very welcome. Now go and stop Zarok before he drives me to an early grave. A piece of the Anubis stone. Its power and worth is unimaginable. I know a bar where I can get cash for this. Excellent work, my brother. Let me ruffle your head. Oh, never mind. But we have escaped. Galomir Plains lies beyond that gate. At you look, running around in your bones, Fortescue. You are just so nouveau dead. Huh? I, Raven Hooves, last of the centaur princes, have not the earth in a thousand years gallop. But last time out, I won on the flat by seven lengths. <laughs> Carrying nine stone eleven. <laughs> Crazy. Yourself a favor do, Fortescue. Take my long bow. It is the weapon of noblemen. <laughs> my breeding you don't quite have, Mr. Johnny Die Lately. But you do your best, I sure. Ciao, Bell. <laughs> Ah, Herr Fortescue, you're back on the battlefield, yes? 
this is good. People say to me, Stern Guard, what do you think of this sword? Or that axe, or this stupid long pole thing with the dinky point on the end? But I say to them, no, 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 you idiot swine herd with the watery gaze. Modern warfare is a question of science. And the foremost scientific instrument in the world is the shield. And then I pan them with it in the face. <coughs> then I think maybe you should take my shield, yeah? Test it in the field, in true scientific manner. You will see for yourself that it is magic you will benefit enormously. <coughs> Oh, would you help I, Bony Knight? I'm being held prisoner on my own farm by rampaging orange vegetable life. It'd be right peculiar. <laughs> oh no, tain't her doing. It's that pumpkin king as rules him now. Weird fella he is, with a devilish temper and a basketball for a head. And that's why I'm trapped. I tried cutting, I tried chewing, but these roots are tougher than yesterday's pasty. Maybe you can find a weakness somewhere. Get I free, Zer Knight, and I'll give you the key to old witchy girl's camp. How's that? Maybe then you can find her and help her bring her unruly produce to heal. Well, shave my head and call me a mangle wurzel. I thought those murderous pumpkins would be the death of me. Then he rode up. A deal's a deal. Except in Cornish wall. Steer clear of that lot. This here's the key what gets you into old witchy feller's camp. Now be off with you and sort things out before more pumpkins come to batter my tatties. What do you want? You fleshless freak! Hang on. Is that you, Sir Daniel? I didn't recognise you for a moment. Eyebrows make such a difference to a man's looks. As indeed does the rest of the face. <laughs> Must be, mm, the best part of a century since I saw you. And then suddenly, here you are. You never wrote me! Oh! <sighs> What a terrible time I'm having. I devoted my life to my sweet, sweet babies, suckling them at the teat. I mean, planting them in good, nutritious soil. <laughs> and this is how I'm rewarded. By an evil, treacherous act of massive ingratitude! A renegade pumpkin! <coughs> Sucking the life from the land, growing in power all the time! I... What's that you say? <coughs> you killed him? Well, that's very nice of you. Is there, um, anything I can do in return? <coughs> My Anubis stone shard. The precious... Well, I suppose I could give it to you in return. No! What am I saying? Dare I? Ooh. Go on, then. Here, take it if you must. Oh, and Sedan. Hmm? If you see my sister, the forest witch, on your travels, tell her to stop plotting against me, or I'll boil her head in her stinking hippie caftan for pig food! Okay. Bye-bye. Greetings again, good Captain Fortescue. My heart glows to see that you're still alive, Sirrah. <laughs> Gosh, but I miss the camaraderie of serving with you, all cuddled in together, keeping warm at night, telling scary stories until we're afraid to put the light out. <laughs> in fact, in memory of those marvellous times, I'd like you to have my most cherished of crossbows, designed specifically for heroes just like you. I never got round to using it properly, what with Zarok killing me prematurely and all that, but I'd love you to shoot something into his eye for me, for old time's sake. <laughs> hey, stop! You can't do this to me, aren't mayor I am. I can do what I like, you foolish pot belly. 
Now, once again, where is the Shadow Demon Claw? I can't say. I'll not betray my constituency. Not in an election year. Oh, you misguided assortment of porky scratchings. To the asylum with him. He'll remember soon enough, once he spent a few nights slopping out with a possessed lunatic. By heck, you'll not get away with this. A traditional, but factually inaccurate statement. Captain! Tear this pathetic village apart. The claw will be here somewhere. And don't forget to check in Fat Boy's biscuit barrel. But this is outrageous! The mare is not mad. Mad for pies, maybe. Listen, my friend. I did some time in a nut house, and that butterball will be singing like a canary before he's dried off from the first shower. We must follow them. If we want to get our meat on the Anubis stone fragment, we've got to save that porky politician. Fortescue, you skinless swine herd. What do you want this time? <coughs> well, yes, I should think you do need help. Sadly, I'm not a psychiatrist or a cosmetic sawbones. I can only help a shoddy rapscallion like you in one way. Here, take this magnificent hero sword before I change my mind. Although I fear it will be wasted on the likes of you. Hmm. Hmm. Here's Mr. Axie! Bah! Yuck. I've seen some nutters in here, but never have I witnessed such a face. The craze grin of the imbecile. And not one shred of sanity left in that terrible, bugly eye. Keep away from me! Hmm. Hmm? Oh. Sorry, pal. No offence, like. Can you help? I shouldn't be in here. I'm not mad. I'm the mirth. Oh. I miss my old life. Opening fates, mayoral dinners, showering without a possessed psychopath, offering to scrub me back. Please get me out of here. <coughs> the Anubis Stone. Now, there's a thing. I know the whereabouts of a piece of that stone, but I tell me, it won't be easy to get at. It resides. In a proper scary place. The Shadow Demon Prison. Down in Enchanted Forest. Left there many a year ago by my granddad's granddad. For safety reasons. <laughs> it's right complicated. First, they'll need to get into the Enchanted Forest. Luckily, I've got the key with me here. Second, You'll need the Shadow Demon Claw that'll get you into the prison itself. The claws in the safe in my house. There's not the time to go into that now, but I've left clues in the village to help you get that safe open. Last, you'll need to find the witch that resides in that dark forest. She knows where the entrance to the prison is. Got all that? Hmm. <laughs> Good. Now let's both be on our way before Zarek gets back. Have you got a sausage roll? How about a scotch egg? Hurry, comrades, tear this place apart. If we don't find the demon claw, Zarok will have us marking out the lava trees for the next millennium. Daniel, honey child, you look so pale and thin. What's up, baby? You woman not feeding you properly? Don't worry, sugar. I'll build you up. Make you grow. Back to full health. Take this potion. Believe me, it'll boost your performance in many different areas. And remember, I'll be waiting here for you when the big battle's over. Save a little potion for me, honey. <laughs> Greetings.
Greetings, Sir Daniel Fortescue. You have summoned the Witch of the Forest. But, aha! I see you are surprised I know your name. I have the power, you see. I commune with the tree spirits. I can see auras. I can see psychic imprints. I can see the label in the back of your armor. But wait. I also see a vision. You seek a mysterious lady to advise you on color therapy for the monovisual and teach you the meaning of leathery love. Okay, okay. You're looking for the prison of the shadow demon. I knew it. I see all. But the prison is hidden by an enchantment, Sir Fortescue. <coughs> Do not despair. I can lift the enchantment. But first, you must do something for me. There is a fungus that grows around these parts. It is harvested and guarded by a gang of woodland fairies. I need four. Four, I say. Pieces of this fungus for a potion I am brewing for my sister, the Pumpkin Witch. Bring me my fungi, Sir Fortescue, and the prison will be revealed to you. Here, take this magical net, you bone-faced buffoon. Those fairy freaks are faster than they look. Oi! You're in fairy territory now. We're geezers, right? Bit of ducking and diving, bobbing and weaving. Buy a little fungus, sell a little fungus. We're rough diamonds, but we love our mothers. Now, what brings you down our manor? <laughs> Looking for fungus, eh? <laughs> well, you've come to the right place, me old mate. I'm carrying now. Why don't you make us an offer? <laughs> Hey, you're my fungus for free? Ah, I think you better go, pal, before I give you a slap. <laughs> Stone me a magic net. Peg it! OK, OK, it's a fair cop. Take your fungus and whack off out of it. But you better watch your back, cos I've got friends, see? Yeah, my sister knows the two fairies. Oi, I want a word with you, Gravestone Gub. Are you the soppy tart what's been sniffing round this manor for fungus? Mm -hmm. I'll give you more about it, cos I'm the daddy now. Don't you wind me up, what? You be butchers twerk, you walking eye socket. Oh, take the fungus! I was only having a laugh. Now scarper, while I'm still in a good mood. I'm the fastest fairy ever. Look, <laughs> I'm just a blur. Go on, have it. <laughs> you what? Hand over my fungus to a civilian? Do me a favour. <laughs> Fat chance, tortoise head. Get your own. Ooh, I'm so scared. I'm busted for an earther. <laughs> You want something from me, you have to catch me first, sunshine. Come on, then. Pull your finger out. Here, yeah, mate, that that's the business. Give a go. I'll go on. You take the fungus and leg it, and I'll chase you. Hello, mate. <laughs> you look lost. What are you after? <laughs> Give you my fungus? You're having a laugh, ain't ya? Ha, here, you can't pull you up to this. <laughs> well, a magic net! Oh, this guy's tooled up. I'm off! Wow, look at the face, look at the face! Take the fungus, all right, it's yours. And tell Kev, next time I see him, I'll punch his pixie lights out. Fortescue, my good sir knight. I knew you'd come through with the mouldy growths. At last, I can prepare my concoction. Mm -hmm. Uh, what's it for, you say? 
It is a medicinal unguent of great power. An enchanted remedy for my sister's head. Oh, yes, that's right. She's a lifelong migraine sufferer. Bad posture. Now go. Henceforth, you will find the prison of the Shadow Demons revealed to you. Oh, my brother, I take back all I said about your small head. You have done it! This fragment of the Anubis stone is like a pilgrim's money belt. Ours to take. Grab it! We're home free! Mr. Zarok, sir. Gallomere Castle lies yonder, off the bows. Ah, the castle. Ancestral home to a long line of kings. Last relic of a more noble time. I've long dreamed of this moment. Oh, Lord. Look at that provincial decor. Aye, tis a pretty fortress. Yours for the taking. Actually, I thought I'd start with a few modifications. Open fire, Captain. Pound the walls to rubble and smash the rubble to dust. But, sir, the castle rests on a long dormant volcano. Might that not be a tad mm, risky? Why, Captain? You might be right. Ah, I see. Ha! Silence! Uh -oh. Ah, look, everybody. It is the common little Fortescue man. You're back so soon. Like how you say, a bad growth, we? Oui? Uh-huh. <laughs> mm. 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 It seems to me that you are in the weapon department a little undernourished. But worry not, for I, the great Raven Hooves, has taken pity on you. And will your armory bolster evoke this amazing fiery longbow? Perfect for flaming kerchiefs and crusting creme brulee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course, we crowned heads of Europe are known for our good taste, exquisite manners, and excellent pace over the jumps. And we give things away to show that we can afford to. Leave me now. Your dress sense offends me, and your breath smells of earth. Mm -hmm. Said Dan, ciao. You're not doing at all badly. But there's still much to do if Zarak and his hellish Fazgul's are to be vanquished. I can ferry you on from here, but first, you must help me. My new robotic assistant, Mechadeth, has just blown up. I'd sent him off to clear up this battlefield when suddenly there's an almighty bang, and machine parts are raining down everywhere. I knew I shouldn't have bought second-hand. Do me a favor and gather up the pieces, would you? I've got to go and fill out a warranty card. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, and while you're at it... If we're ever going to leave, I'll need you to release my boat. It's around here somewhere, locked up in a boathouse. I don't know. You miss one repayment and they impound your whole livelihood. Well done, Dan. Excellent work. Parts collected, boat free. Your can-do attitude is an inspiration to all. Now, what do you want to hear first? Bad news or bad news? Mm -hmm. Uh, no. 
There's nothing you'd technically call good news as such. Mm -hmm. Bad news it is. Zarok has pulverized King Peregrine's castle and released a river of molten lava that bars your way to the entrance. Bad news, too. The sequel, if you like. I can't ferry you there. I only take souls on one-way journeys. It's a clause in my insurance, so I could ferry you there, but you'd be stranded in no man's land. But apart from that, everything's great. Wait, John! As my people say, there's more than one way to mount a camel. Legend tells of a suit of fireproof armor hidden on Dragon Island. If we get our sweaty little paws on it, we could walk through the lava. Gad, your little talking worm is right. Good luck, my brave but somewhat idiosyncratic team of adventurers. I'll take the boat upstream and wait for you by the ruins. Maybe point the icy finger of death at a heron or something, I don't know. Ah, sometimes I think this job lacks the creative spark. Hey, Fortescue! Blood Moneth Skull Cleaver won't talk with you! <laughs> so why you spell it Fortescue, foolish western fool? What Blood Moneth Skull Cleaver want to know is, if this Zarok's so bad, how come you get go back slaughter him, eh? Why you, Fortescue, you who catch foot on grass like girl in chase scene, woo-hoo, twist the ankle and shot, dad, straighten eye by harrow, squish, gurgle, gurgle, without blood of enemy on hands, eh? Hmm? Still, I'm not bitter. Here, I'll lend you my battle axe. She thirsts for blood, as much as I. <laughs> Don't worry, she not hurt you, girly girl. Right, what have we here then? You're not one of my regulars, I can see that. A boat? You want a boat? Not possible, I'm afraid. The Seafaring Charter, Chapter 3, Rule 7. Only pirates can rent pirate boats. Got standards to keep up, see? Next! <laughs> you are a pirate? Yes, of course you are. And my name's Jolly Roger. <laughs> Listen, your genuine buccaneer wears tricorn hats and eye patches. They have peg legs and parrots. I know these things. I meet pirates on a professional level every day of the week. Now keep out of my way. Blocking my counter is a serious breach of health and safety, and I've got a ship returning as we speak. Somebody I can do business with. A genuine scurvy sea dog. A black-hearted scourge of the high seas. And, if I may be so bold, quite a dashing one at that. Mm -hmm. Shame you couldn't patch up your eye socket. And I guess that's the latest crazy seafaring fashion, eh, Captain Burney? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure you have plundering to do. J -j just follow me and I'll show you your boat. All right, Dan. How are you doing? Hmm? I have to say, you're looking a bit bony. I've told you to stay off the tabs. Are you getting enough chips, man? You look like you could do with a good curry or two. Mm hmm Now, hey, man. Have you got yourself a magic sword, like? Hmm? 
What's that you say? Daniel, man, you can't go into battle against an army of the undead without having you as a magic sword. Are you mental or something? <laughs> Here, man, take mine, man, pet. You'll get nowhere without it, I'm telling you. Hmm. Tell me you're here on a quest. It's incessant, it really is. What do you want? <laughs> oh, I do so loathe the attentions of the great unwashed. That diction brings tears to one's eyes. Enunciate. <laughs> Ah, my dragon plate armor. Yes, it's certainly a bold piece. Look at the line, the detail. Très chic, très amusant, très now. The breastplate came from my mother, you know. That woman was a saint. Oh, <laughs> dear boy. No, 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 no. No. I feel for you, I really do. I mean to say, that outfit you're sporting is so last century. But you're asking for a piece of my mother. Do I come round your house demanding a slice of boiled pig's knuckle or whatever vile creature you were spawned from? <coughs> oh, for heaven's sake, how absolutely vulgar. Really, this is all I need. I suppose I'll have to grill you alive like the others, but what does one do with them after one's cooked them? I can't abide tinned food. Enough! I'm an intellectual. I have no time for this. Here, take my mother and go, you bogly eyed oik. No more, please. I'm getting one of my heads. Fortescue, you must stop stalking me. Or I will call my cousin, who is a police horse. <laughs> <laughs> Only for fun, of course. <laughs> he doesn't the money need. He just likes the underclasses to trample. Perhaps I should try slumming it occasionally. But then I talk to you. You are the yin to my aristocratic yang. Do you see? <coughs> Enough small talk. A final gift for you. A magic longbow, no less. Of course, a simple person like you should find its raw power very pleasing. Personally, I prefer something in gold. Dan, you're a veritable star, though sadly I fear one destined to work in radio. I'd shake you by the hand, were it not for the unfortunate side effects. Get your potato-shaped bottom in my boat, and let's hit the haunted ruins. It's up to you now, Dan. The fourth and final piece of the Anubis Stone lies among this crumbling fortress. The fate of all Galomir now rests upon your bony shoulders. But hey, no pressure. Sir Daniel Fortescue, noblest of my courtiers, bravest of my captains, clumsiest of my croquet team. Oh, that we should meet at such a dark hour, with the fate of this realm lying once again in your hands. Good Lord Fortescue, what happened to your jaw? Mm -hmm. Bad luck, old man. Dashed awkward for the meat course, what? Can I get you a soup or something? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, of course, my new bestone is yours, old man. Can't think of a better chap to look after it. However, slightly more pressing concern is that the Shadow Demon Army hides beneath us, within this very mountain. As we speak, they prepare to invade good old Galomir. If we're to thwart that arch-cad Zarak, we must bring down the castle on top of them. You follow? Simple solution, of course. Someone must unleash the lava behind the castle floodgates. Burn the blighters where they stand, or even where they sit. 
probably hurt more. I knew you'd volunteer. What a man. A secret passage behind the throne will give you access to the gate's control lever. You just have to pull it. Of course, it's a highly dangerous mission, even for a dead man. I dare say that when that fiend sees what you've done, he'll make sure you spend eternity in the most unspeakable torment. But then I know these things mean nothing to a man of your courage, eh, Fortescue? Mm -hmm. Splendid! Good luck, old bean. Break a leg. Mm -hmm. Oh, Danya. There you are, my lovely. I was so worried when you left. Come over here, where I can look at you. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> you look weaker than a kitten. A kitten who's been chewed up by a Welsh collie. <laughs> I know you have the heart of a hero, Danya. Don't listen to anyone else. The laughing horde and the thousands who mock you, who call you Target Face. Mm-hmm. They don't know you the way I do, Daniel. And I'm going to help you prove them wrong. Being an indomitable Celtic superwoman, I, of course, have an array of magic lightning bolts at my disposal. Still, I'll let you use them too. Be careful with them, though. They cause terrible scorch marks on natural fibers. <laughs> Stowaway on board. I've told the men to scour the decks for him. Excellent! And once you has catched him, scour the decks with him. Use his nostrils as a dust buster and his armpit hair as a mop. <laughs> Is that absolutely necessary? Couldn't we just give him a good tongue lashing and drop him off at the next port? There'll be no tongue lashing on my ship, Mr. Mate! We be bloodthirsty cutthroats, not cantankerous airdressers. Now, I want that landlubber dangling from yonder yard arm. Boy, his bowels! Mm, how horrid. He won't cause us any problems anyway. He can't access this section of the ship. I've had the men barricade us in. Ah, why do you always barricade us in together, weirdo? Oh, just get on with it. Catch that scurvy bilge rat. Okay, my friend. It is time to test this cannon out. I'll light the fuse, then we climb in quick. Got that? Uh... Oh, don't be such a baby. I will be fine. I will be safe inside your head. As for you, well, just try to land on your toughest point. Hang on, I've not thought this through. Ha-ha! <laughs> we have taken the ship! Lower the whatnot, hoist the doohickey, um, something to the anchor. Anyway, steer a course for Zarok's lair. Ha-ha-ha-ha-ra! <laughs> Herr you have come to visit me again, yeah? You look a little battered and weak, for sure. You should make better use of your magical shield. The magical shield is the foremost scientific weapon in the... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, then for now we will concentrate on reviving your strength for the fight ahead. Drink this potion to feel as mighty and warrior-like as Karl Sterngard himself. But nicht so handsome, of course. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's you. Uh, <clears throat> actually, we never thought you'd get this far. I don't really have anything written down. Uh, hang on. Uh, okay, here goes. Your final encounter! Damn. Sorry. Pressure. Your final encounter, that's better, with Zarok. 
awaits beyond this point. He has surrounded himself with his unnatural bodyguards. We've always had our suspicions about that lot. But you may yet even the odds by calling upon the powerful magic of the Anubis Stone. Good luck, Third Daniel Forteth girl. Oh, look, that'll have to do. Now go on and die quietly. Some of us are trying to read. Ha, ah, this is it. The final showdown. Finally, you can prove yourself as warrior. Be brave, Sir Fortescue. And remember, we have all pieces of the Anubis Stone. Oh, and if it looks like you're going to lose, don't let him hit you in the head. I've got the place just how I want it now. Sir Fortescue, my old nemesis. So we meet again. <laughs> I see. That a century spent as rotting meat has done nothing to diminish your naive obsession with the freedom of Galomir. Do you remember my champion, the late Lord Cardock? Well, guess what? He's back! <laughs> and he says he's looking forward to shooting you in the other eye. You know, for old time's sake. And while Lord K prepares for your rematch, he sends some of his soldiers so you don't get bored. What? You dare defeat Lord Cardock? At least I won't miss mucking out his stable. But of course, Fortescue, you still have to die. Prepare the attack, my beautiful Fazgolds. Interesting Fazgol factor. Did you know that Fazgolds are impervious to mortal weapons? It's really quite fascinating. So unless you're hiding a ghostly penknife or a spectral billiard ball in a sock, this battle is going to be very short and uninspiring. Goodbye, Fortescue. Okay, time to fuse the Anubis Stone! What's that? The Anubis Stone! Oh, this is going to be good. Fortescue, what's a gangling dullard like you hope to do with the Sacred Stone? Some of the most learned sorcerers in history have been driven mad trying to understand its elusive mysteries. But don't let me dampen your optimism, my lord captain of the King's Croquet team. For the honor of Galamir! And its suburb. Fortescue, forty, baby. You are full of surprises. Who could have foreseen that my Fazgal horde would be bested by a rancid ignoramus and his flybait army? But how are you with creeping things, Forty Skew? Obviously, you're fond of worms. You've shacked up with them for a century. But how are you with snakes? Mm? Do they scare you? Big. Snakes find them agreeable, do we? How about huge, monstrous snakes, Forty, darling? How about me? Curse you, Fortescue! Curse you! Curse you! Thricehold! So... It's come to this. I am finally defeated! Painfully, ignominiously! But particularly painfully. But! If I am to fail, then all shall perish with me! 
I didn't get to be the embodiment of evil without maintaining certain traditional standards. You are doomed for this game. You will never leave this place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Now that was an evil laugh. And so Sir Daniel Fortescue finally earned his place in the Hall of Heroes. Down on the right, past the one who looks like a pantomime horse with a dodgy accent. And Galomir, fair Galomir, was freed from the yoke of evil. The sun beamed down from the heavens once more. Small children skipped and ducks could paddle the ponds in safety. Zarok, the most vicious, most malignant, most foul of creatures, was utterly vanquished. This time... Never to return. Well, assuming there isn't a sequel.